Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Happy Monday, everyone. How are you guys doing? Thanks for coming in. And thank you, replay viewers, for being here, too, as well. I'm going to flip you guys around, and we will get chatting. Hey there. How's your evening going, guys? Hey, thanks for coming in tonight. Hope you all doing well, and hope you had a great Monday. Uh, tonight, guys, we are continuing this heart block. So we, we were able to piece it all yesterday and we basted the heart down. So we have all these little basting stitches and we're gonna do the actual needle turned applique tonight. So this is the, uh, from the Splendid Sampler quilt along that's happening right now online. This is block number one. So here's the instructions. It's by Pat Sloan. It's block number one of the Splendid Sampler. You can go to thesplendidsampler.com to find out more. There's still time. We're only on block one. If you guys want to join and you guys can still catch up on everything, there's going to be a hundred blocks total. And it's a mystery quilt. So every Sunday and Thursday, we get a new block. And I'm going to do them all here online. So block number one, we're going to continue tonight. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. For those who are new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we create lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery. And I'm also a fabric designer. And I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. And we craft. And I invite you guys to grab have a craft and join me. I'm here for about 45 minutes to an hour every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So I'm going to flip you guys around and we will get started with this uh, needle turn applique. Flip. All right, guys, here we go. And have fun. Yes, we have fun, too. <laughs> okay, so here is where we left off. Well, we're not in focus. There we go. Hello, favorite part of the day, quilt time, yay! Everything about quilt, I'm there, that's awesome. Yes, I am so excited too to be doing this. Okay, so here's where we got last night. We, um, we basted, we got the whole, all the piecing done, piecing done, and now all that we have left is to uh, stitch the heart down, basically. And so we've put basting stitches stitches in. Blue line here is our actual edge of the heart. And so the part from here out is what we're going to tuck under. So that's the seam allowance because we don't want a raw edge in this particular type of applique. Uh, so we're going to tuck that under and then stitch it to the back. And we're going to tuck it under with our needle as we go. And that's why it's called needle turned applique. Uh, so an applique is just taking a piece of fabric and then stitching it onto the background fabric in some fashion. So that's what that's what applique is, uh, a shape that's stitched onto the back. Oh, for falling asleep last night. Oh, <laughs> it's acceptable. We're here pretty late. All right, so we're gonna go in. There are so many times, so many ways of appliqueing. This is probably the slowest, most hands-on way to applique, and I haven't done it before <laughs> either. Uh, this uh, I've done maybe six stitches worth of um, this type of applique, applique uh, and I thought, hey, this is a chance to give it a try. So there's gonna be more applique with some of these blocks that are coming, I think, and. Uh, We'll try all sorts of different applique. So um, this won't be the only kind. But yeah, let me know what you guys are working on tonight and we will get going. I just took a little piece of thread. Uh, this is kind of thin thread and I'm using a thin needle too because I don't want to poke big holes in the fabric. So I'm just going to tie a little knot on the, on the end here. And let me know if you guys are doing the Splendid sam Sampler Quilt Along too. I'm kind of using it as a, a way to learn a lot more about quilting because I don't actually quilt very much. Oh, you love needle turn applique. Okay, well, then if I'm uh, um, not doing it well, then then you can uh, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Oh, flir Flourish Girl. Uh, Barbara, you're doing it too. That's awesome. Oops, I just clicked off. There we go. 
So I'm guessing you got this block all done already. Everyone pretty much, uh, oh, you are too, classic Kate. Uh, everyone kind of jumped on the chance to do the first block and it's just so crazy. Oh, and you're doing it too. So all my, my whole entire feed is completely hearts. <laughs> Sherry, uh, is that what yours is like too? It's just like hearts, 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 hearts. And uh, the, just my whole Facebook feed is just only these hearts, but it's kind of fun. been cutting up scraps, but I'll do it this week. Oh, neat. This is the first, oh, you'd learn this technique at age 10. Okay, good. You can help me out too. Tomorrow, oh, but embroidering now. Oh, yay. That's exciting. I always love embroidering. We might do an embroidery project tomorrow, maybe. Uh, all right. So let's just get going, I suppose. I'm going to start on a straight edge and then work around because that just seems like the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to just start by hand tucking an edge. So I'm, I'm tucking it till it reaches my uh, basting, which is um, was a quarter of an inch in. So the seam allowance is only an eighth of an inch for... Uh, applique in theory sometimes. I had to read about this a lot a couple days ago and uh, watch some videos to see if I get it right. Hi, new to Periscope. What are the floating hearts? Oh, if you tap the screen, it gives you, it gives hearts. <laughs> and it's just like a fun little Periscope thing to do. All right, so I tied a knot in the end of my thread and I'm just coming up from the back and I'm grabbing just the, a little edge of my applique that I folded over. All right. So let's see. I have a feeling this is going to be like a coordination thing that I get after a little while. So I'm kind of tucking it with my needle. Here, maybe you guys can see a little bit better there. All right. So now I've kind of, I've, I've, I'm holding the fold for the next spot. And I'm just going to go back down almost exactly where I just pulled up, but not on the applique. So I'm going to, I'm in the applique now. I'm going to go right on the side, uh, right in the fabric behind the applique, but, you know, kind of in the same spot. So you see it's, it's coming up here. I'm going to go right next to it into the fabric. And then I'm going to just go like a little stitch over. I'm not really sure how far over I should go, but how about right there? And I'm going to just grab a little bit of that applique again. So can you guys kind of see that? So that will be my first little stitch. And you can see the, you can see, if we get in focus again, there. There's my first little stitch, pulling it kind of tight. So that's what we're going for. So we're going to make a bajillion of those all the way around. So and as we go, we just keep using our needle to kind of fold Fold the seam allowance back in there, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's that's how we do this game here. Keep tucking it under, hence the needle turn applique. We're turning it with the needle. There, and now I got some more, so let's make our little stitch through the back of the fabric, go over, and then come up through both the front and the applique again, or the back fabric and the front applique fabric again, just just a tish. I'm only grabbing like a couple little threads of it. And that's our second little stitch. So I can see how this would be just super fun um, for traveling. You know, just taking a little block like this and appliquing it on. Like, especially if, you, if you've basted all your pieces on beforehand like this, then you don't have to deal with pins poking you or anything like that. You don't have to deal with supplies except for a little needle and thread. And I think it'd just be a really good little travel, um, travel craft. I'm thinking it'd probably get a little faster once you get used to it, too. Did you watch Andrew today? Yes, I did. Oh, I was going to mention that, guys. So Andrew Ronig, who I don't know if he's in here yet, but he had some nice things to say about uh, all of you guys here. So that was pretty neat. And it was kind of random that I that I caught it. I caught the replay. And uh, so I, I I guess it was meant to see, see the replay. He um, just was saying how he liked... Um, 
a lot of the, com- the Periscope communities that he's being a part of. And he was just super sweet. He mentioned uh, the scope and he mentioned all you guys in it too. Like by name, um, a lot of, um, you know, you guys who are here every night and stuff. So that was just really, really sweet. Yeah, he's so nice. Oh, this is kind of like embroidery. Like, it's just, it feels, this feels nice. This really does feel um, kind of relaxing. I mean, this is definitely not the way if you want to get it, get an applique done real quick. But, man, I can see how someone could just chill and and do this. It may be still, yeah, it's probably still up because I think it was done today. So it will, um, it will most likely be up still and i don't know if he does all his things to catch or not i should we'll ask him when he comes in sometime i don't think i saw him pop in today it sounded like he was in wisconsin right now though so maybe he's um on vacation or something because i know he's um he lives in the same town that i do here in minneapolis he'll be here though (laughs) there look so now you can kind of see we got our little start going so look at all our, our little itty stitches holding this down. Are you using a needle for embroidery? Um, I'm not using an embroidery needle. I'm using a, a thinner needle than I'm used to. So here I can show you the difference. So this is uh, my typical embroidery needle. I, u- I, I typically use a size 5 embroidery needle. This is, um, I'm using just a normal, I don't know, I guess you'd call it just a normal sharps, like a sharps needle, uh, which is just basically a sewing needle. It has a smaller eye. You can see I don't need a huge eye because I'm using this thin, uh, thin thread and it's actually a little bit thinner. I don't know if you can really tell. It's a hair thinner than the embroidery needle as well. So it will not put as big of holes in my fabric because I don't want big chunky holes in a Milner. Okay. A Milner needle. Yeah. When I'm looking for it, I mean, I don't, sometimes I don't know the names of all the needles or I forget. So I just think, I think about my, my floss and my fabric when I'm looking for a needle. So I, for this particular case, I need something that can hold thin floss, which is basically every needle. Um, So a small eye is fine. I want something thin so it doesn't poke holes, big holes in my fabric, and I want it to have a sharp point because I'm going through fabric. Sometimes sometimes you want a blunt needle, like if you're cross-stitching or something like that, so it doesn't pierce uh, pierce the the threads. I never remember names either. Yeah, I think English paper piecing use an 11. Yeah, a size 5 embroidery needle is... A pretty, it's kind of a fatter, I mean, it's not really a fat needle, but it it feels maybe a little fatter than um, if you're used to sewing with these little things. I like it. I think it's a nice, good size, and for embroidery, it holds uh, embroidery floss really well. And uh, um, if you're stitching through, like, a muslin or something like that, it's kind of perfect. I like them. I think the eye is just, I like the size of the eye. But I have to say, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed doing this hand stitching. I can see myself um, wanting to do more of this needle turn applique. Like I'm feeling it in my, like in my fingers, in my arms. I kind of like, it's just, you know, when you, when you feel something and it just feels it like kind of resonates with you, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. Same as a straw needle. I'm not sure what a straw needle is. Is that like for beading, like a beading needle? I know for beading, you have very long, thin, um, flexible needles. This isn't a flexible needle, so you don't you don't really want a flexible. Oh, for English paper piecing. I'm not sure. I don't actually do a whole lot of English paper piecing. Actually, like. I've only done one finished project actually with paper piecing and it's, I think I have it in arm's reach yet. Yeah. It's, uh, this guy, we did this. <laughs> so this is probably the most English paper piecing I've done. I, I haven't done, um, too much of it, but this, you know, that's paper pieced. We did that uh, a few, um, I think last week we finished that up. 
here on Periscope. So, and if you guys want to see any of my old Periscopes to see like what other projects we're doing and stuff, you can find all my things on Catch. So that's K A. Oh my gosh, I just lost my brain for a second. It's K A T C H dot M E slash penguin and fish. And I'm also penguin and fish everywhere, but on the catch uh, that has all my other projects. And I'm also storing all of the blocks that I do there in a, in a folder. So if you go to collections, um, you'll see the splendid sampler and I'll be putting all my blocks that I do in there, the videos. But yeah, so if you're, hanging out and you're crafting and you just want to play another crafter doing stuff at the same time, you know, you can just have it on in the background and stuff. And that's, that's what I like doing at least. I probably don't need to stitch this close to each other. I think I'm just getting, getting into it a little. I can probably go a little farther apart and be just fine. I think it just kind of feels good to go that close. Is it going to be scrappy? Is anyone planning on using the bonus block? I'm gonna, I thinking I'm doing the bonus block in mine. Is what gonna be scrappy? My, uh, the whole, my whole quilt here? Uh, it's not, it's not gonna be scrappy except for the, um, except for the point that I'm using fabrics that I already owned. I didn't, I didn't purchase any more fabric. I, um, uh, so I'm, I'm, I've picked, it's not, it's not going to be scrappy. I, I picked about 30 to 35, uh, fat quarters or, you know, whatever I had 30, some are fat eighths, some are yards, just kind of what I had. I've picked, I've kind of curated, uh, 35 or so fabrics. So I'm going to pick from there. I have a wooden folder and pressed, pressed hand foot made by, oh, that's so cool. Pressed hand foot. What's that? Is that like those um, wooden things that you can use to press seams instead of ironing? Is that what that is? All right, let's see how we're doing here. I think that's looking all right still. Oh, the clapper. Yeah. You know what? I got to write that down because um, we talked about that the other night and I couldn't, I couldn't remember what it was called. I don't have my piece of paper. Here it is. I have my little piece of paper here. Clapper. Yeah, it's kind of like a, isn't it kind of like a fat dowel with like a fat or like a flat angled end on the, I found links to different needle types. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's probably, you can probably do a good a Google search for like, what needle do I use? And there'll be probably some pretty good, pretty good blog posts and, and tutorials out there for needle types. The ones I typically deal with are, um, you know, related to hand stitching. So there's like embroidery needles and uh, cruel needle needles and uh, tapestry needles are all pretty similar, but different in the sense that uh, like a cruel needle has a bigger eye, so it can hold. Oh yeah, I don't know how Periscope deals with links very well. Um, but a cruel needle has a larger eye and a sharp point. So it can still pierce fabric and a tapestry needle has a large, oh, there we go. has a large eye and a, a dull point because in the, the tapestry stuff, you don't want to um, pierce the fabric as much. Although now that I think of it, I might have those reversed. See, that's the thing. I can't ever quite, can't ever quite remember which is which. People are writing the date. Oh, the date they finished their blocks. Oh, I kind of like that. See, I was kind of, um, I was thinking about that today. I, I was thinking like how, in general, I was thinking, because um, I haven't been labeling any of the things that we've been doing here on Periscope. And I've, I've been thinking, well, how do I, how should I label these things? Or should I label things more? And uh, that's a great idea. I kind of like, I kind of like the, the dating of it. I don't know. I don't know about dating each. I don't know if I'll date each block though. I'm kind of, um, I definitely want to date the whole thing, but I don't know. I, I like the idea of dating it too, but I kind of don't want, 
I don't know if I want more stuff on my block, you know? Like a flower press. A book with no back binding. I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to think. I I must have missed something. So I'm going over these curves right now, and I'm having to really kind of pay attention to my curve uh, so it still feels like uh, like a curve. Oh, it didn't chirp. Ah. Check if you click uh, if you click my name, uh, and it says, you know, it says following, and then right after, it has, like, a little bell. If that bell is crossed off, then I don't think it's going to ding. So you can follow people without it dinging all the time if you have that turned off. Do you clip your curves? You know, I was wondering about that, um... You know, typically I clip my curves. I did not with this. And I, I was thinking about that before we started the scope. I was wondering if I should clip the curves. So typically on a curve like this, you would clip in like little V's. So you're cutting out bulk um, before you flip it around because it'll reduce the bulk and the seam allowance and it'll make a nicer curve. But my seam allowance is only an eighth inch wide. I didn't do a quarter of an inch. And so I thought maybe I could wing it and not do that. I didn't get the notification for Andrew's bra because I didn't get the notification for his either. I just happened to turn on Periscope and notice that he was live, but it, he wasn't live at the time. It was a re I, once I got on, it was a replay. So typically I would clip these curves. Like if I were to, um, if I were to make this into like a stuffed ornament or something like that, I would. Uh, you know, if I'm sewing another piece of fabric to this, sewing around and then turning it inside out, then I would have clipped the curves. I am going to clip, I'm going to snip this part though. I'm going to put a little, um, you kind of, you won't be able to see because it's, it's that blue color, but I'm going to put a, like a little snip in there. Um, so when I fold it under, it has, um, its area to go. So usually on in inner points like this, you put a little snip into it to the, uh, close to the uh, seam allowance edge and on outward curves you put those little v clips in there is it difficult to do with a loop is i'm not sure i i'm not sure i know what we're talking about there a loop what do you mean by a loop all right so I, what i am doing though is just kind of going little by little and uh so it is bulky. It is being bulky around this curve, which it, it would be, but I'm just kind of going slow and making sure it's all kind of tucked in. And I think that's just going to work just fine. Making sure I put in enough stitches and everything so it it's all held in there. I think if I had a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I would, uh, I'd, I'd have to, um, snip or clip the clip the curves a little you know I do have to say um so when I learned how to do this I, I got a little demo of how to do this oh there's Andrew hey I saw your scope today you guys you're that was just so sweet that was just so cute and nice and you're just a nice guy All right. Oh, so should I be doing this in a hoop? Um, I, I don't think needle turn applique would be easier in a hoop because I'm actually, I'm really kind of manipulating the fabric. Like I'm kind of really getting in there and I think a hoop would make it too tight. Oh, <laughs> I have a good time with all you guys coming in, in here. So it is my pleasure to host this craft and chat and relax and, and that time here for sure. And I just think it's so cool that you guys come in all the time, too. I just, I so appreciate it. And, you know, it keeps me doing it for sure. All right. So working my way around this curve. Uh, you know what? The way I learned how to do this uh, was with um, this basting stitch where you kind of tuck you tuck up to the edge of the basting stitch and I'm finding that that 
so far has been really nice versus me just having to follow a line because I can tuck this in and it sort of stops right at the basting line. And that's been super duper helpful, uh, especially on these curves up here. So I think I would, I think I would continue to do it this way, even though it is like another extra step to stitch all the way around like this, but I really kind of like it. Yeah, Andrew did such a nice scope today where um, he uh, he thanked a bunch of people from each of the, the Periscope com communities that he likes being in and stuff. And it was just so sweet and mentioned a lot of you guys here and stuff. And, and I don't know, I just think that's just neat. We got a, we got a good community here, guys, that's for sure. I like it. Did you baste by hand or by machine? I basted by hand. So I, um, and you can check yesterday's scope. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> well, that's cool, Vanessa. Uh, so yesterday's scope, if you uh, go to catch, K-A-T-C-H dot me slash penguin and fish, um, it shows the whole block up to this point. So what I did is I pinned it with a couple pins then did this kind of just rough basting stitch. You know, it's not perfect. I just kind of estimated what a quarter of an inch was all around um, and did that pretty quickly. Uh, and then then I was able to take the pins off. So now I'm able to really hold onto this without, um, and really hold, you know, I'm really using my thumb once I tuck, tuck the uh, fabric under when I turn the needle or the turn the fabric under. I'm really using my thumb to hold it there, and I don't think I'd be able to do that if this was in a, in a quilting hoop or an embroidery hoop or anything. I, you know, I I really kind of like it this way. Although I suppose if it was in a in a, a a stand like where you don't have to hold the hoop and you can um, still manipulate everything, and I think that might work. But I don't know. It's working, I think, just fine without without a hoop. This is actually um, really kind of relaxing. I'm, I'm liking this a lot. I've never seen applique in a hoop. Yeah, I haven't either. I think it would just get in the way, really. I've seen some hearts on Instagram. Yes, so that is another, uh, that's another style of applique. That's what I'm saying. There's like so many different styles of applique. So uh, in, in future blocks, we'll do some of those other ones. So... You know, there's raw edge applique, and that's kind of, this is a raw edge. A raw edge is an edge that isn't tucked under, um, so it's got the actual edge of the fabric. So we could have just left it like this and put a zigzag stitch all the way around, and then we'd be done. You know, I mean, we'd be done in five minutes, right? Um, that's probably the fastest way. And then there's ways to elaborate on that where you put a stabilizer, like an iron-on stabilizer behind. So all you have to do is iron it down and then stitch a line around it and then you're done. I mean, that's so fast either. Oh, there's PA Shoals. That's my mom. Yes, or a blanket stitch. So that, again, you... you um, you fuse down so it's kind of in place, or you pin real well, or you baste like this. I mean, this is the traditional, you know, way to do it. You baste it down like that, and then you can put a decorative blanket stitch by hand. Uh, you know, there's there's another way to do applique where you put a terrible, uh, like that you can actually tear piece of um, fabric behind this, and you sew them together, and then then tear the back, and then turn it inside out, and then you know, it's kind of magically making this nice edge and then you stitch it down in whatever way you like. There's all sorts of different kinds of applique and we're going to play with a bunch of them. Uh, this is an, uh, this type of applique I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm going to just put that snip in here because I'm getting towards the corner. I'm not going all the way to the seam allowance, but uh, close. And that this will just help. Um, it'll spread apart when I tuck it under instead of getting into like a tight bunch. I like the look of this the best. I feel like this just is so traditional. Like I feel like, you know, I'm in, you know, it's 1910 or something and I'm, and I'm in my farmhouse doing this, you know, it's, it just feels, it feels really good. And it's actually a lot more satisfying. Oh, this is more my style. Uh, it's, it's a lot more satisfying than, uh, I thought it was going to be, it really is, um, 
kind of relaxing doing all these little stitches. And this heart is a uh, is pretty easy to do it with because it's got you know big arcs. Ooh, I'm having a little trouble with this little bit here. Um, it's not a ton of pieces. It's one just big shape. So it's not it's not too difficult to do it this way. And I've never done it this way before. It, it's it's fun. I usually uh, err on the on the quick side because I'm usually when I'm doing applique, it's usually for you know, a project for a pattern or a magazine or something like that, and I need it done a whole lot faster than this needle turn. So I'll, I'll do the fusible a lot. Um, and raw edge applique actually can be really fun and pretty too. I got this funny bump here that I don't want. I'm going to try and adjust that a little bit. This is this is because it, it got so bulky This uh, on the curve. Because curves, you get the bulk when you turn it underneath. So this probably would have been good for me to clip, but I'm gonna still try and I'm gonna try and just manipulate it a little bit. Oh, so did you finish? Sorry, I was kind of looking down that that whole little bit. Did you finish your uh, your your applique or your blanket stitch? Mine was pretty rustic. Uh, she's doing the whole thing with me here, so I'm I'm pretty excited that Mom and I will both have our splendid sampler. Quilts. Are you doing two of them still, Mom? She. I know there was talk of her doing two, but I think, I don't know if she nixed that once she she got started. But yeah, so I'm excited. So once we're done, not a perfectionist like my daughter, I'm getting it done. That's what I'm doing. I'm not being perfectionist. I'm just stitching. See, I don't think it's perfectionism. I just think it's once you have the it's just learning it's it's trying to figure out okay what's the most uh what's the easiest way for me to tuck this and hold this and once you get that then you just keep doing it and then if you're doing the same thing over and over again then your stitches are going to be the same and your positioning of your hands and your needle are going to be the same and that yields same looking stitches that's what i think oh so are you are you going to do a second one or or not do you think I'm not doing a second one. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm pretty, uh, yes, muscle memory. There you go. I'm pretty, uh, uh, not excited is the wrong word, but I'm pretty surprised. There we go. I'm pretty surprised that I'm committing to this project actually, because it's a pretty big project to commit to, um, for me, but you know, we've been doing these scopes and everything and uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm committed at this point, and and we'll get it all done. We have other things to do here anyway. <laughs> yeah, how are we doing on time? So we're, um, you know, we might do this a little bit tomorrow yet because we're just still still working on it here. And it's ten already, so maybe I can pick up the pace. We'll see. We'll do one, a couple more stitches here. So I had to Google a lot on how to do this, um, some tips and tricks. Like I had a, I'm like, what seam allowance do I use? And I learned that, and I have a book, I have a quilting book that I, like an encyclopedia of quilting or whatever. And um, it said to use an eighth inch seam allowance. So that's how I figured out that. And so now here, I someone had this whole swoop thing that you do in inner corners, like like it's a, like it's a windshield wiper, so we're gonna give that a go. Thanks for sharing this technique. Time to get kids again. Oh, thanks for joining me. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to be doing this te technique. I haven't done it before. I think it's kind of fun. Finished mine, but it was, but I wasn't typing or reading comments. Oh, <laughs> congrats! That's exciting. So I just did like that little window washer thing um, that that I read or that I watched a video on, and that kind of just tucked in this corner right away. So I suppose th that's a pretty decent corner for this, I think. You haven't started anything yet? Well, Cora, there is tons and tons of time. You'll be fine. <laughs> My hubby is watching the Grammys and I'm watching you. Perfect. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> you know, I always, I can never keep track of when all that stuff is on, like uh, the Grammys and, and, and all that. And even, like, all the debates and stuff, too. It's just like, oh, there's another debate. 
Yeah, I forgot all about the Grammys. I know, right? That's what, that's that's me too, Kathy. All right, we are almost to this center little point. I am Grammys to me. That's not a big deal for me. I mean, I, I actually don't listen to a ton of music, which you know sounds terrible or whatever. But I I not. It's not a huge part of my life, so I don't pay attention to it too much. I'm going to add one little extra stitch in this center area to kind of hold it. Give extra little sturdiness. Oh, really? Ooh, that sounds like that would be kind of fun together. See, the thing is, all that stuff is on, like, my little Facebook feed afterwards, so I just watch the good clips on Facebook after. It's kind of what seems to happen now. All right, we are getting up into this other side. Yeah, I, I like quiet too. I mean, I'm starting to, I'm trying to do a lot more writing. I, I know I've talked about that before. My, my word for this year is consistency. And the big thing I'm trying to be con more consistent with is, is writing. So if your emails are getting answered a lot faster and I'm getting more newsletters out, it's because I'm, uh, I'm writing. <laughs> I'm writing more, and I'm just trying to stay consistent with that. And that, I can't have any sound on at all. Like, I have to have, I have to shut my office door. I have to put my headphones on, and I, and I don't listen to anything with the headphones. I just have them on. They're noise-canceling headphones, and I just wear them. Oh, you love my emails. Oh, thanks so much, Carl. That's really sweet. That's really sweet of you. But, yeah, I have to have it all off. And then... When I'm not doing that, if I'm working on something that I can just veg out on, then I'll have, like, a TV show series in the background or something. Something that I don't have to pay attention to, but um, I don't know. There's something with music when working with music. I don't like the time period of a song beginning to ending. It kind of makes me a little anxious when I'm working. Like, it's not... It's not a long enough chunk. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy you like them. I have a really good time writing them, and I just I want to do a lot more of a lot more writing of of those. And it's been over the past uh, you know years. It's been uh, like the thing that always gets pushed to the side, and it's the thing that I don't want to get pushed to the side. So I've kind of made more of a commitment this year. I wanted something quick and affordable, so I got ooh a new. Uh, New sewing machine. That's pretty exciting. This is uh, my mom. I'm working on my mom's. Um, if you saw last night when I was sewing, it's my mom's sewing machine from high school mom or college. I don't know if she's still in here. But yeah, so I have her old sewing machine and it's awesome. I like it. It's a Sears. It's a Sears Kenmore. I decided I hate the new singers. I don't know much about any new machines at all. Don't like the new singers. After high school, okay. She got she got it after high school. I'm gonna make sure I'm getting this arc good, okay. Oh, it was your serious Kenmore that busted, oh no! <laughs> That's surprising, they're kind of a... Uh, is it like one of those all metal ones? Like. They're pretty hefty deals. That's no fun, though. That's the worst. It's the worst when you want to sew, and then all of a sudden, things go wrong, and it's like, what the heck is going on? And you don't know if you just have to clean something, or if it's whatever, or if it's really actually something that's broken. Um, so that's that's not fun. I have um, a sewing machine, you know, one of those sewing machine vacuum replayer places. I have one of those, um, it's walkable, like it's within a mile, it's less than a mile, it's like four blocks away. I mean, I wouldn't carry my machine that far because that would be super duper heavy, but it's so close. So I, I um, after I've sewn for a long time and before big projects, like before we did the splint, before the splinted sampler started, I brought it in just to get clean and, and all that again and... I did drop a, a huge uh, shelf on it. Do I do a... Oh, uh, Cora, yeah, do you do a lot of sewing? Uh, 
I dropped a shelf on it when, um, or I don't know, I just put it too much stuff on the shelf and it broke a hole in the drywall. This was at our apartment uh, before our house here. And a huge heavy shelf fell on top of my sewing machine. So now there's a big old crack in the top of, of the sewing me- machine, which sucks. But um, it still runs fine. It actually had a huge dent and, and wasn't um, running as well. And when he pounded out the the dent, it got a little crack. But now it now it's good again. It just has some more wear in it. All right, yeah, I'm going around. This is the most, the biggest arch part. And I can definitely tell that there is a lot of bulk that I'm having to tuck in. I'm really having to pay attention to the arc of my... Um, uh, of this top of this heart here. So it it's helpful to have this line here. So I'm really trying to follow my line that I drew on with water soluble marker. So do you guys have more than one machine? How many here have more than one machine? It's kind of funny talking to sewers because it, it kind of looks like they all have, or sounds like a lot of them have more than one machine. <laughs> fell asleep if you if you go silent that's okay oh yeah i've kind of just been chilling here how are we doing on time okay it's 10 after 10 clipping the curves helps yeah i'm thinking clipping the curves would have helped a lot i just thought you know i have this eighth inch seam allowance i wonder if i can just deal with it and and not clip the curves and so far it's doing fine but yeah clipping the curves definitely would have helped if I would have done a fourth inch, a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I would have for sure absolutely uh, uh, trimmed the corners. Or trimmed the curves, I mean. I did clip, or snip, I guess. Snip the, the um, like the valleys and clip the curves. So I, d- I did snip snip this. Oh, thanks. So, so we're pretty far. Well, actually, I'm probably about halfway. So we started here, and we're we're here now. So if you see up close, so let's let's get in focus again here. So this is where we started, and this is our edge. And we're, you know, you can kind of see on the dark all our little our little stitches, stitching it down. I'm having fun, though. I could see doing a really big long-term project of this and, you know, it being just a really just content kind of working time. This is actually feeling a lot more like when I knit and crochet, where I like knitting and crocheting for just relaxing the most, more than anything, like more than embroidery, too. Because with embroidery, I still have to pay attention to my lines and my colors and just change colors a lot. But with knitting and crochet, you just stitch and stitch and stitch, and, and you don't have to think, and it's just totally relaxing. And this actually has that same feel, which I'm pretty excited about because... Um, because Quilting hasn't really had that feel for me, except for maybe when you do a binding, but then you have all this bulk around you all the time, so it's a little different. Um, but this has that feel. This has that knitting crochet feel that I really like, that like meditative feel. So I don't know. I'm kind of digging it. I could feel, or I could uh, see doing like a big... Have you have you seen the Hawaiian quilting before? Uh, that's where they kind of... It's kind of like a you know how you'd make a snowflake where you make all the sections and you snip bits out of it? It's kind of like that, um, but but a huge piece of fabric. So like a big white piece of fabric on a colorful background or, or vice versa, but cut like a, not like a snowflake, but in a, you fold it up a few times and then cut all at like a crazy, crazy, crazy design. And then you applique the whole thing on like this. Like it's kind of crazy town. It's got to take years, I would think. Um, but man, a big a big project like that might be fun. But I, I think I'll try more little projects like this first before doing... Or I'll finish some of my other bigger projects. How about that? Spray basting. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So you could spray baste it down too. I've never used spray basting. You know, all that stuff 
that I'm putting, like, anytime I'm putting anything other than fabric on fabric, it kind of freaks me out a little. Like, I I haven't done the glue basting. I know a lot of people like glue basting. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel weird. I feel a little weird about all that stuff. So, um, I don't know. I don't know if I would do glue basting ever. I'd, I'd give it a try. Use fabric a fabric glue stick? Oh, to, to baste your heart down? Oh, that's interesting. Huh. So, did you like did you like it? I've never tried it before, the glue basting. It freaks me out, but, you know, I was saying on here earlier, or, like, in earlier scope, like, last week or something, that I should give that a try sometime. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. But I'm sure it's one of those things that I give it a try and I'll be like, oh, I'm never going to go back. No way, no glue. So no glue for you. <laughs> Kind of didn't like the finished look. Oh, because of the glue? Oh, that's interesting. Off super on fabric something. You have applique glue. So could you just tell where it was glued down, kind of? Oh, that reminds me. Someone asked uh, what I glued this to leather. I used Mega... um, I used uh, E6000, that, like, super-duper contact cement stuff. I mean, that you use for jewelry and stuff. It's probably way too intense for the purpose of that. But I didn't know what else would stick to leather, fabric to leather. And I had it on hand, so I I used that. But yeah, I know a lot of people swear by doing the whole, like, Elmer's glue or that special glue um, that's basically Elmer's glue to baste everything. Works for me. Oh, to put together a quilt sandwich. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I like I like my pins, my basting pins, and I actually really kind of like this uh, basted edge here. I don't do a lot of like little basting like this, um, but this kind of called for it because, like I said, I'm I'm tucking it under until it hits that basting stitch, um, and I've seen other people do needle turn where they don't do it that way. They just follow the line, and I think this way is is nicer with this basting stitch. I don't like to use glue. Oh, sometimes it goes yellow. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. Anytime it's not just fabric and thread and more fabric, it kind of freaks me out. Is it, is it difficult to s- smooth with the spray? Yeah, see, that's the thing, too. Can you smooth it all out w- if you're spray basting a quilt together, a quilt sandwich? Which is an awesome term, by the way. I, I always kind of laugh at myself when I say quilt sandwich. Do you guys all know what a quilt sandwich is? Um, it's where um, it's that step before you actually quilt. It's when you're um, you're you're yes, you're basically layering the three layers of a quilt. So the back of the quilt, the batting of the quilt, and the front design of the quilt. Those three layers are called the quilt sandwich. No problems with spray basin smoothing. Hmm, interesting. Only because I mentioned it with my quilts. Oh, okay. <laughs> Quilt sandwich. I'm having a little trouble with this curve. I'm trying to tuck this one under. There we go. We'll tuck a little further. Yeah, any um, bigger curves than this, and I would definitely have to be... Uh, clipping them because they're a little unruly. I got another little one of those funny points that I was dealing with earlier. I heard our blog where you use Elmer's glue if you can leave the stitching so long it can mold. Oh really? Oh see I don't know it's freaks me out. All right, I got this little point that I don't want here. I'm just trying to tuck it in there a little bit more. It might just have to stay. We might just have a little point there. Bad for ozone. Ooh. The spray basting? Is that what we're referring to? Once I spray baste, I quilt, bind, and wash before it goes to a new home. Oh, you wash it then right away, too, when you're done. Yeah. 
that's the thing. Like with all this glue stuff, you'd almost have to finish by washing your quilt. And I don't, I don't usually, I don't usually do that. I, I just kind of leave it until, until it needs washing. All right, wow, yeah, it's bulky. It's bulky around here. I, it would have been good for me to clip these anyway, even though they're really little. I mean, I can feel it. I won't feel it as much once I take these basting stitches out, but there's definitely some bulk in there. Fusible batting is nice. Oh, I've never used fusible batting. So I have used fusible um, stuff for like applique, um, and we'll do that for a different thing. So I suppose that's putting like another thing into the quilt that I typically don't do, but I don't know, something in particular about putting glue down. But I suppose that fusible stuff is basically just paper with glue. And I use the fabric salvia all the time, and that's just kind of like glue too, so I don't know. I think it's just when it's in the quilt. I've used fusible batting on little stuff. I think I might have a sample of fusible batting in my stash somewhere. I should maybe, I should... I should bring that out and give it a try. Do a little uh, little baby quilt or something with it. Unless I brought that home. Mom, you might have that, but I think I have it here still. I had somewhere to pull the basting stitches out a few times. Oh, out a few times. A few at a time. Oh! So, like, I should have snipped a few of these before tucking it under? That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like this idea, though, that I'm going right up to the edge of it. I mean, that's been kind of helpful. I just kind of push it down there. And I'm wondering if I, I'd lose that ability. We're getting there around this guy. Let's see, how are we doing? Uh, we're getting close to the end. Uh, we might, um, I'll, I'll keep going for a few more minutes here. Just keep going. Just keep it untied. Oh, and pull as I go along. Oh, well, that makes sense. I should have done that. If I do this again, I'll do it that way. That makes a lot of sense. But I'll do this for a few more minutes, and then um, tomorrow evening, we'll finish it up and, and start a little, another project, I'm not sure. Oh, and tomorrow evening, um, it's gonna be touch and go tomorrow. I'm, I'm gonna be um, meeting friends that I haven't seen in a long time, um, old work friends. And I'll be going out to dinner with them. I'm, I'm thinking I'll be back by, by 9.30. But it helps uh, also finger press along while I go, oh, that, that makes sense. Um, so I should be here tomorrow. Um, but if I'm late or if I'm not here, then I'm still, still uh, with friends I haven't seen in a while. So... <laughs> no, I cannot leave. Uh, chances are I'll be here, though. Oh, it looks like we're starting to jitter a little bit, too. So I think I'm going to flip you guys around if it's still good to go yet. <laughs>